Welcome back. Bill McCaffrey, Inside Sports, on the sports station and news station that you should be watching every evening. And that's CTV, Prince George's Community Television. And my guests now are John West and David Carroll. John West is one of my picks, along with a guy named Nick Clemens, to become the next great sports announcers in the Baltimore, Washington region. Baltimore sports voice, huh? That's right. right. I'll, I'll take that. Hey, man, and we've had him on here before. We've had Johnny Holiday on here. Even Phil Wood has been here. Went here for the Blitz. So you Brothers. got the eye to pick him out, huh? That's right. I'll, I'll take and that. And see, I'm picking you, man. There you go. And we've had uh, Mike Richmond, who wrote the Redskin books and the Redskin Vault book. He's been on here. We've had a lot of the newsmakers, shall we say. There you go. And you're 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 in line, man. Let me tell you. And uh, we do have a lot of people in the Baltimore area that read what I send out to. I have a newsletter that used to be my column that appeared in papers, and people wanted me to keep it going, even though I stopped writing for newspapers. So we continue to put it about on a limited uh, basis right now. And we even blogged a little bit for DST too. Sure, that's where I'm doing it. So yeah, and that's a great place to start. Well, if you need Baltimore sports, WNST.net is absolutely the place to go. So. That's right. They've got my Very other good. man. I used to beat in fantasy baseball, Rick Snyder. Oh, Rex. Rick Snyder. Yeah. i got another friend yeah. named Cole. It's Rick Snyder. Okay. I'll tell you a little. This is a funny joke because uh, Rick used to cover the Redskins for the Washington Times and the city paper and all like that. And one day uh, some owner came up to him and he said, Look, we're going to have to be better friends. You know, we stick together. And he said, uh, you know, because you're one of the tribe and I'm one of the tribe. And Rick told him, he says, I am not Jewish, I'm Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> Steiner, Steiner then found out that he, he, he couldn't get to him that way. Okay. All right. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Those were the days, my friend. There you go. Anyway, so we got to look a little bit at the Ravens drift. Yeah, big weekend happened. just ended. Yep. yep. And the Redskins, look at and what happened in that drift, too. That one where the Bears sort of messed up on... Uh, we were talking about that before the show. That's just ridiculous what, what the Bears did. And, you know, you kind of want to let the league off the hook and just kind of blame the Bears, but I, I think there's a good case to be made where the league is, is um, at this point now equally responsible for what happened. Uh, if you don't, if you don't know what we're talking about, that the draft came down. It was the end of the first round. It was late Thursday night, and uh, the Ravens were going to make a trade with Chicago to move from 26 to 29. No, 29. And they were going to get a fourth round draft pick. The Ravens were going to get a fourth round draft pick for moving down three slots. And around two, two and a half minutes ago, it was all agreed to. And Ozzy from the Ravens got on the phone with the NFL confirmed the trade, and then just silence as the Bears never made the phone call. That's right. Ridiculous. So then the, the clock came and went and tried to figure out what happened, and the Bears never made the call. And then the, the Chiefs at 27 came up and fortunately didn't take the guy the Ravens were interested in, took a wide receiver from Pitt, Baldwin, and then the Ravens were able to get that, that their 26 pick in at 27 and took the guy they were looking for, Jimmy Smith. That's actually going to be a real problem because that hasn't been flushed out yet. The, uh, the contract signing with Jimmy Smith in the, in the draft because everything is, is slotted there. The, the seventh pick gets this, the eighth pick, that kind of thing. And so there's some real question about, I imagine, between Jimmy Smith and his agent, Drew Reisenhaus, what pick he was. It's clear he was the 27th pick, but if you were his agent, and Drew, Al Drew Reisenhaus is the, the NFL kind of leading guru there, he's going to vehemently argue that he's the 26th pick. And I, I'm sure that all that's going to get solved. The real question is how quickly does it get solved? Is he going to be the first guy signed? No, not at all. Will he be one of the last guys signed? There's a real chance of that. And that's a real concern because we need Smith ready to go for week one to cover uh, Wallace and, the, and participate in beating the Steelers that week one. So, Well, he came to the right club. I mean, you know, East Coast bail bonds are now looking for his number so they can be in line when... It's it's keep it never, That's right. keep it We're keeping it positive. But, you know, my, my big concern about the process is if, if the NFL uh, doesn't pass judgment on this swiftly, it's going to uh, speak to the integrity of the draft. If one team can't rely on another team to execute a draft, execute a trade that they both agreed in principle to do, 
then it breaks everything down. If one team can call another team and ask them to agree to something and then not follow through on their end, how can any team draft anybody? And if the NFL can't enforce and make the Bears pay in some way, shape, or form for agreeing to a trade and then not executing it, then what does any team, What no, no team has to abide by any rule. I think the league can. I think they're choosing not to, which is the larger issue. And that's a real, and that's, I, don't, I have no idea why. Um, and, and we talked about this before the show, that you now are opening up for teams that are notorious for cheating, like the Patriots. They could... Yeah. They could well, absolutely, yeah. My contention: if this had been, if the if the Patriots had been in the Ravens' position this year, I think something would have been done. I think with the, the 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 pool that the Patriots have in the league, or the Cowboys, if Jerry Jones, or the Bears, or Jer- if the if the to imagine if the Cowboys had been on the receiving end of what the Ravens would, I think Jerry Jones would they would have gotten some compensation. I think because, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I think because of the position the Ravens are in in the NFL, they were just asked, they were just told you're going to get nothing and like it. And for me, it speaks to the integrity wow. of the draft. And take a draft. The Ravens, the, the Bears should have been forced to either give up a draft pick or this year or next year or some kind of compensation. No compensation well, is we'll be bad. Back. We've got to take a little break right now. And I'm going to let you answer one question that I know you can answer. Why I'm wearing a Baylor Bears hat. And we'll be back for the answer and for more on not only the draft, but baseball. We have to look a little at that, too. And we'll be back with more after this message. answer for us, right, Dave? Yes. Baylor Bears, two first-round draft picks. That's right. And uh, your granddaughter is a proud uh, attendee of the Baylor University. That's right. Great. And she's going into television, too. She's in New York right now doing her internship. She's into uh, television script writing and research. Let's hope the uh, this year draft can make up for the uh, Sergio Kendall debacle last year. And uh, my my prediction is that uh, Sergio Kendall will never see the field as a, as a Raven uh, because not only, not only his injury, uh, but his poor uh, decision making process uh, has continued to drink uh, despite his doctor's warnings and the players' war- team's warnings not to drink during his recuperation. And obviously, based on the DWI, uh, he blew a one seven. Um, uh, and, and, and zero eight is the legal yeah. limit. Uh, Blue one seven after uh, promising not to drink to the doctors and to the Ravens. Uh, I think his decision making ability is poor. And uh, after a full year of uh, inactivity uh, and a full year of bad decisions, uh, I don't see him making a Ravens team this year. It, I don't know. Uh, you got. You got. Don't you have to be a little optimistic and hold out some twenty two year old? He's a kid, and I know that there, there, everyone transitions to adulthood at different times. And I. I can understand your skepticism, but I have to err on the side of uh, excitement because mainly, and I don't know, I don't know Sergio at all, but it's it's the the tape of him in college. That kid is a disruptive defensive player everywhere on the field. Can get in the backfield and make fantastic tackles. And I just, I'm just, I'm going to remain, I'm going to remain hopeful for at least another year and hope he can get on the field. As, as disruptive as he is in the backfield in college, that's how disruptive he is in his own personal life. He cannot make personal decisions, and he's proved that even after falling down, uh, supposedly sober, which I don't believe. Sure, I don't believe um, he. Uh, continued to make bad personal decisions. Drove a house into a drove a car into a house. Well, that was before he was drafted. Sure. Yeah. But he had promised the Ravens when he was drafted that he cleaned up his personal act, had curbed his drinking, and then obviously that's proved to be false. Yeah. People, you know, I don't know too many people that just mislanced and fall downstairs. I don't believe he was sober when he fell down, and he's continued to drink. It's been proven. I don't believe he's mature enough at this point to play NFL football. I'm, I'm not challenging what kind of kid he is. I, I am. I'm going to remain hopeful that he can transition out of that. And the 